excited that you're here and that we're getting to hang out. And, and I'm super excited to, to have an opportunity to stand with you and talk about this special charity that's near and dear to your heart that you've put together called Vets 1000. Veterans 1000 yes. Incorporated. Please yes. tell us all about it. I, I want to know everything. Okay. For, for starters, yes, note to self and disclosure, I am an Australian. I am living in Australia, but my foundation is actually here. It is out of Phoenix, Arizona, and it came to life in November last, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to say that, November 2018 seeing we don't know when this is going to be caught by anybody. So we will put a date to it. <laughs> so November 2018, that, that sparked and came to life in Phoenix, Arizona. And tell us more about it. Well, actually, actually, all the paperwork came to life sure. because the idea actually came about three months before that. Okay. And one of the ladies in my group that inspires quite a lot of people, her name is Seely. And I'll just leave it at silly. Decided to put one of her rentals up for veterans. And when I heard that, I thought, I've always wanted to do something to help others. Mm. And I thought, what a fantastic idea. But as usual, they say things in Texas are always bigger. Well, I argue things in Australia are bigger even sure. still. It's a big country. <laughs> it's a very sure. big country. Yeah. Uh, but I started to do a whole lot of research into finding out what veterans needed. Sure. And it was definitely housing. It was definitely financial education. It was definitely help in the rehabilitation sure. and both physical and mental and it was trying to put families back together sure, sure. and I don't do things on little scales so the goal pretty evidently to start off with was we have 2,000 doors in multifamily apartments for either single veterans or pairs of veterans. Now, I'll say pairs because I think two of them together is still the environment that they were in, in the veteran, in the forces. Mm -hmm. And I'll say forces because that brings everybody sure. together. Sure. And, but it's enough to have space to still have a bedroom on your own but still have a common ground if they wanted a common ground. So when you say 2,000 doors for people who might be watching this who aren't familiar with multifamily and what that might mean, you mean apartments? And 2,000 apartment buildings. Well, it's not actually 2,000 apartment buildings. It's the units. The right? units. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the units. So there might be an eightplex somewhere sure. and a sixteenplex somewhere else, sure. and it is is okay. or a few duplexes. There could even be ten duplexes on a on a a lot. Sure, a lot. Yes. Okay, right. Sometimes there's a language barrier here. We do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, again, part of my research led to me of. There's a lot of families that have been virtually ripped apart because of the veterans' positions that they were in. Mm. And I wanted to be able to provide 500 of those houses for both the physical disability side as well as the mental disability side. Like PTSD and, yes. and other things like that. And, and going on to PTSD, mm -hmm. there was quite a few retreats that I found mm -hmm. that were actually in Arizona. Okay. That's sort of why I ended up focusing in there a bit too. All right. But I was finding that there was a big gap that the VA didn't seem to be picking up the tab for. Oh. Okay. And I kind of like tried to finite 
the rules of yes, the VA would pay the bill to here, but nothing could come after there. Mm. So that was one aspect of making the decision that we would fix the whole house up first and then the veterans move in and hopefully bring their families back okay. in. Sure. One other aspect that came from the foundation was that we were going to have a credit repair. We did, I got a lot of feedback from guys that had been in the service and that was really sexist, wasn't it? Guys and girls in the, in the service. Sure, sure. I've been spanked for that before. Okay. <laughs> we'll understand what you guys, yeah, guys in general. I understand. Um, I understand. That had got themselves in awful financial trouble because they'd gone into the service at 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. Is it 17 that they're allowed in or is it 18? The day they turn 18. Yeah. I, I've got 18 in my head. Any, anyway, but virtually straight from school, straight into the service. So they didn't ever get a chance to be educated in any form of financial IQ. Sure. And, of course, every man and his dog would say, oh, you're in the service now, you've got this fantastic wage, you can have a $60,000 car. Mm. So they hook them up for that $60,000 car. Only thing is, three months down the track, this particular person is getting his orders to go there. Yeah. $60,000 car sitting here. Yeah. Still getting paid for, not being used. Then they finally get out of the service and if they've got no job to go to, yeah. their credit's kind of ruined because they can't make payments on those yeah. things. Yeah. So a lot of the financial IQ that I want to try and help with is credit repair. Sure. The other part that I would like to help with is uh, basic budgeting okay. to go from, I, I know I'm going to just throw a figure out here, mm -hmm. say that they're on $2,000 a month after they get out. I know that's possibly not realistic, but just work with me on numbers. That's $500 that they're getting a week. Most places in rent, you're still charging between 200 a week and 250 a week. Well, that's kind of like half of your wage. Sure. These people have always been in a position that they've had three square meals a day. Mm -hmm. They've never had to look after themselves. Sure. They've never had to pay a utilities bill. Sure. They've never had to pay a credit card. Well, yeah, because they, they were in the service and they were bunking. Straight they in. were just going yep. where they were told to go and do what they were told to do. So, yeah, they, they, weren't, they didn't have to do those things. And unless you were lucky to be in a unit that had elder people that wanted to play that role, mm. uh, you were really kind of left out in the cold. Sure. Uh, you just were unaware. Yes. Sure. So between the credit history, the financial IQ, mm -hmm. with going back to the apartments, they will actually be paying rent to the foundation and I'll explain a little bit about that afterwards but that will also go as part of their establishing a rental history for 12 months okay. where we also found that there was a little bit of a, a dip in the system that people would be in a homeless position possibly mm. And they wouldn't be able to get into the rental market because okay. they had no credit, okay. they had no rental history. Sure. Um, even if they have people sort of throw it around that, oh, they can get a VA loan. Yes, they can. But if they don't have any support in anything, mm -hmm. that loan's going to go guts up. Well, it's, it's hard to gonna... get a loan if, if they get out of the service and they can't find a job and they have nowhere to live and, and I mean you know 
there are some men and women who can go back to family, but that's not always the case. Sometimes no. people go into the service to escape family situations. Family. You know, that does happen too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also want to be nationwide. I don't want to be specifically in an area because I think this is something that is a need overall. Sure. So that's basically what the aims of the foundation is. Okay, yeah. And we would like those figures repeated for the next five years. So 2019, we will have 2,000 doors in multifamily apartments. Is that okay. better? No, it's good. It's yeah. Good. Um, and 500 single families. Sure. So over the next five years, those figures will be repeated. Okay. And then in five years' time, we might do another note to self. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, I think, uh, I think you've got some big goals, but I know that you're very well connected, and I know that you've got a lot of support. So I don't see why it couldn't go to the direction that y'all are wanting to take it. And uh, it's definitely an honor and a privilege to hear about it face-to-face. -face. Thank you. I mean, face-to-face -face great, but like face-to-face. Face, yeah. I mean, come on. You, you can have a cup of tea and talk about it. I mean, come on. You can't get, can't get any better than that. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you so very much. Absolutely. And, yeah, stay tuned because... This little Aussie's coming at ya. Watch out! <laughs>